Salut! I'm Sumo from French Arena. Would you like to learn the top 10 most important French proverbs? C'est parti! Now, if you would love to improve your French vocabulary, you would like to know phrasal verbs, idioms, and most definitely French proverbs. Proverbs give some form of life advice, and in most cultures and languages, you definitely have proverbs. They really just help us reflect who we are and the values we stand for. They are timeless and comforting and always seem to bring this magical wisdom that helps us through life. If you check on the internet, you'd probably see about 100 French proverbs, 200, 300, but I'm sure that you would not be able to learn every single thing today. And so in today's lesson, I'm going to take you through the top 10 most used French proverbs. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking this video. If you like it along the way, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share with anyone else who would like to learn more about the French language by learning the French proverbs. Number one, il n'y a que les imbéciles qui ne changent pas d'avis. And this literally means only fools will never change their minds. It's equivalent to saying a wise man changes his mind, only a fool never will. So we really use this proverb to probably justify stubbornness. Maybe somebody is being stubborn and they are staying put. They don't believe in changing their minds on a certain topic or something they have always believed in. And so opinions may vary, but even when some people are sticking to a particular thing they've heard before, even when they have proof that it's different, you can then use this proverb to explain to them that only fools will never change their mind. So for example, if I was telling a friend of mine to read a particular book that I believe would help her maybe to get a job or to learn the French language better, whatever the book might be about. And she has been proving stubborn for a while saying, no sumo, I don't believe in reading books. I believe there's another way I could find the information I'm looking for. I could then use the sample sentence. Je pensais que tu ne voulais pas lire ce livre. And she could then say, ah non, il n'y a que les imbéciles qui ne changent pas d'avis. Which obviously means she's realized that reading the book might be good for her. Let's take a look at the second French proverb. Number two, à raconter ces mots, souvent on les soulage. And this is just a problem shared as a problem how solved. So basically, if somebody's having issues or the person you can see that he or she is not in a good mood, has a long face, you're not quite sure of what exactly is going on, you can use this proverb and tell the person, why don't you share with me what your issues are? And so perhaps my friend then decides to share with me, I could say to her, oh, je pensais que tu ne voulais pas partager avec moi. And then she can say, à raconter ces mots, souvent on les soulage. And so she just basically understands that by recounting one's ills, one often solves them. Number three, à vaincre sans péril, on triomphe sans gloire. And this literally means to win without risk is a triumph without glory. Which is equivalent to no guts, no glory. Or they can say no pain, no gain. And so if John and Jane are having a conversation and John is telling Jane that, oh, he's quite worried about changing jobs. He just wants to stay put where he is. He doesn't want to move anywhere else because he's afraid. Jane could then say, success won't come if you're not brave enough to take risks. And so John could say, changer d'emploi peut être assez effrayant. And Jane could say, oui, je sais, mais à vaincre sans péril, on triomphe sans gloire. Number four, il ne fait jamais dire, fontaine, je ne boirai pas de ton eau. And this just literally means, you should never say, fountain, I would never drink your water. And the equivalent is, never say never. Perhaps you used to say you never liked vegetables, you would never eat vegetables, you could never be caught dead with vegetables. But here you are, knocking on 40, <laughs> and what are you doing? actually having vegetables with your meals every day. Even going a step further by actually having celery juice every single morning. So you see where the proverb comes in? Never say never because you don't know what the future is going to hold. If you're enjoying this lesson so far and you're learning a lot about French proverbs and how to obviously use them in your everyday conversations, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and share with anyone else who would love to learn more about French proverbs. Let's take a look at number five. Il ne faut pas mettre la charrue avant les bœufs. And the literal term is you should not put the cart before the oxen, but as we say in English, don't put the cart before the horse. And this proverb comes from the 15th century, from what I researched, and it just basically means that you shouldn't go so fast that you fail to do things in a certain order. So it's often used to temper someone's enthusiasm and just remind them to calm down and start from the beginning. And so let's imagine two friends are talking 
and friend A just keeps talking about, oh my goodness, he's so happy. He can't wait till he gets the money. Once he gets the money, he will get a car. He cannot wait to do this and do that. And the other friend is telling you, why don't you just calm down? Like, do not put the cart before the horse. Let the money come in first before you start deciding on how you're going to spend it and what you're going to spend it on. So the friend could be saying, une fois que j'aurai reçu l'argent, j'achèterai une nouvelle voiture. And the other friend could say, ah, John, il ne faut pas mettre la charrue avant les bœufs. Number six, en tout pays, il y a un lieu de mauvais chemin. And the literal term just means in every country, there's an area of bad roads or like a league of bad roads. But what it really means is there'll be bumps in the smoothest roads. So for example, perhaps you've been working on a project at work for weeks. Did you hit a snag? <laughs> or did you and your friend have a fight? Or did you lose something? Or perhaps money you're expecting didn't come in? This French proverb is very useful in this certain instance. So for example, I could say, Je ne peux pas croire que ma valise n'est jamais arrivée. And my sister could tell me, En tout pays, il y a un lieu de mauvais chemin. <laughs> Number seven, Quand le vin est tiré, il feu le bois. And this literally means, When the wine is drawn, one must drink it. <laughs> but the equivalence is, Once the first step is taken, there is no going back. Just keep moving. So once you decided to learn the French language, there's no stopping. Just continue learning. So for example, I could say, Je n'arrive pas à croire que j'ai signé en bail. And my sister could say again, <laughs> Quand le vent est tiré, il faut le bois. But of course, I hope you know that this French proverb could actually be taken literally because if you have already opened a bottle of wine, you might as well drink it, right? What are you waiting for? And if someone should ask you what I need to finish drinking it, then tell them the proverb. Quand le vent est tiré, il faut le bois. Right? Let's take a look at the next one. Number eight, petit à petit, l'oiseau fait son nid. And this just literally means little by little, the bird builds its nest or makes its nest. And the equivalent is the slow and steady win the race. This just reminded me of my of one of the childhood stories of I think the turtle and the rabbit. Have you heard about it? Have you read it before? If you have, tell me in the comment section below. So perhaps you've been saying, I cannot wait to be fluent in French. I want to visit Paris. I want to visit Marseille. I want to go to every single francophone country in this world. And I want to just speak to natives and just be, be dreaming in French, eating in French, speaking every single thing should be in the French language. And so perhaps you're constantly saying, J'ai hâte de parler couramment le français. And I would say, petit à petit, l'oiseau fait sonner. Which just means calm down, slow and steady win the race. You will become fluent. You'll be able to speak French every day of your life and you would love the language even more. So just calm down and you will get there. Let's take a look at number nine. Number nine, les chiens ne font pas des chats. Which literally means dogs don't make cats. And the equivalence is the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So like father like son, like mother like daughter. Basically, this is used when you want to say perhaps a child takes after their mom or after the dad or after both parents. So perhaps someone could hear my son speak and say, oh, il aime bien parler. Il aime bien parler. And maybe me or anyone else could definitely say, oui, les chiens ne font pas des chats. And number 10, qui se ressemble s'assemble. And this just means those who look alike get together. Or the equivalent term, birds of a feather flock together. So we would say people with similar interests sometimes gather together. So if you like snorkeling or snowboarding, or you just like traveling together, you would see those kind of people with each other. But also sometimes this proverb is used when disapproving of a shared character. So perhaps you find that you have a friend who doesn't like reading and you would say, okay, both of you are alike, or you have a friend who doesn't like having his bath or combing his hair or something, you will then say both of them are alike. So, how did you find today's lesson? Do not forget that proverbs are used to illustrate a certain point and they can offer a short chord for explaining or imparting knowledge. And so, incorporating a French proverb one or two times is quite interesting in a conversation. But please be careful to not just start using proverbs every single time. If your friend has asked you a question, don't just say the slow and steady means a race. Just say, okay, that's fine. And then the next 10 minutes, another proverb, next 10 minutes, you're like, okay, is that all you can say? Just proverbs? So just know when and how to use them properly. And so just to round up, you can use these French proverbs to impart knowledge, to give advice, to tell a story, console someone, or to reinforce morals. So there you have it. 10 most used French proverbs. In the comment section below, tell me a proverb from your country. I would love to learn more from you. Thank you so much for watching today's lesson. If you loved it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe so you can get notified of more lessons like this and share with anyone else who would love to improve their vocabulary by learning more French proverbs. Until I see you in the next lesson. Bonne journée!